is my 26 day and 8,000 mile solo trip video from California Central Valley to the East Coast and back. I have comments throughout on stops along the way and hope to show you what to expect on such an adventure. Leaving the Central Valley around 7 a.m. on May 23rd, 2022, it was clear skies with temperatures beginning at 70 degrees and quickly getting to 100 degrees. However, when you're in the wind, it's always nice. The first day was to make Las Vegas, Nevada. I was able to do that 500 plus mile run in about nine hours with just a few fuel stops along the way. The first day was awesome. It's mostly desert with the Tehachapi mountain range to cross. There was not much in the way of scenery, but pulling into Vegas on I-15 North it was pretty cool to see the new Raiders football stadium. I decided to spend two days in Vegas and stop by a couple of the cable show locations such as Pawn Stars and Counting Cars. Vegas is a fun stop for sure. Hey, good morning. 6.30 a.m. in Vegas on uh, Wednesday, the 25th. Good stay. Good ride out here. Heading back, uh, we're heading east this morning, trying to make it as far as I can. Uh, pretty good out there. Um, maybe a little windy today, they say on the news, but uh, this means I gotta go a tiny bit slower. Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys again. Bye. Leaving Las Vegas through Arizona, on my way to Gallup, New Mexico for the day. The weather was awesome, about 70 degrees, started early in the morning. And uh, the contours of the land, the hills, the scenery became much more interesting as I headed east. I was taking I-40 east and the traffic was light. The roads were good. I packed plenty of water Definitely want to stop and drink water as you go. You can get hydrated pretty quickly on these trips. As I got into Arizona, I stopped in Williams for gas, and the gas station clerk convinced me to head out to the south rim of the Grand Canyon, which is about 58 miles to the north. I'm really glad I did. The canyon is amazing. Up, oh, standing in line. Huge line. The line must have been a mile long. So I rode the uh, side, I rode past everybody on the right side. I don't know how many hundreds of people I pissed off passing them on my bike, on the shoulder, but <laughs> coming to the front of these booths. Thirty-five bucks to get in, and then it should just be a short ride to the canyon. South Rim, and uh, I'm gonna check it out, get some pictures. Man, what a gorgeous day, huh? I just turned my bike off and just been pedaling it downhill towards this gate for the last 15 minutes. Save the heat on my engine. There's a whole bunch of other bikes. Those guys just sit there idling. They've probably been idling for a couple miles because I passed all those all those cars <laughs> anyways gotta do what you gotta do see ya south rim grand canyon he looks like a squirrel about noon wednesday may 25 this is absolutely amazing the grandeur of it video capturing just doesn't doesn't even begin to justify it it is so vast a little cave down there. Maybe I'll go rent that out for Airbnb. Isn't this something? It's the Grand Canyon for sure. It's very cool. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention for all you vets out there. When I got to the gate to the Grand Canyon, it was either 35 bucks, which I had in my hand ready to go. Uh, he asked if I was a vet. I said, yeah. And, um, I guess vets get free military passes to all national parks. So he hooked me up with a free military pass for America the Beautiful. 
and I am good to go for any national park across my trip. How awesome. This goes in the wallet next to the credit cards. So uh, if you're a vet and you're crossing the country, hit the parks, get a free pass. Leaving the Grand Canyon, I took a shortcut via Highway 180, also known as the San Francisco Peaks Scenic Road, which takes you into Flagstaff, Arizona. The drive was beautiful, giving me something other than the desert for a view. Once on I-40 East again, past Flagstaff, I was back in the desert. Coming up on Winslow, Arizona, I had to make a stop to see the corner the Eagle Song references. It's an easy stop to make and worth the iconic location on the old Route 66. Driving into New Mexico, there was more good desert scenery. Day two on the road, and with the Grand Canyon and Winslow, Arizona behind me, I really began to feel the freedom and adventure this trip was bringing to me. On a stretch of road, a freight train and I exchanged our horns. Maybe the conductor was a motorcycle adventurer too. Stopping for gas. Uh, what's your name, sir? Dean. Dean? Hey. I gotta get on my bike, brother. Sick. I'm hitting the road. Hey. Well, do you like that shit right there, bro, man? I wonder. Feel it like you do. I don't have the loud pipes. Yeah. Take care, brother. Hey, sir. Day three on the road, fending off the gas station homeless along the way. I had made my overnight stay in Gallup, New Mexico and headed for Amarillo, Texas. With the songs of Nat King Cole's Route 66 and George Strait's Amarillo by Morning running through my mind. With more desert sun and temperatures in the high 90s, I pushed on stopping only for gas. I cannot emphasize enough being mindful of drinking a bottle of water or two at each fuel stop Dehydration can come on quick, and this affects your well-being and safety on the road. Food can wait, but not water. On I-40 East through Albuquerque, thinking of the Breaking Bad series, I thought to stop, but decided to push on to Amarillo, Texas, wanting to make Amarillo before nightfall. Entering Texas, the roads were great. Where there was road work, they made sure to not impede traffic, and the flow was good. Initially, Texas offered more flat desert, but it wouldn't be long past Amarillo before you got green rolling hills, trees, and the deserts are far behind you. I've been fortunate with the weather, staying ahead of the heat wave behind me and the rainstorms ahead of me. I'd suggest using a weather app called My Radar for real-time weather patterns. It was a game changer for me in planning the next few days. It's also a free download and easy to use. And it's jumping off the interstate on these little side roads, frontage roads, and you hit these little towns, these little gas stations that have these cool things. Just totally document the old Route 66. Pretty proud of their position in that. You know, you just don't find this stuff staying on the interstate. Of course, there's my buddy. There's my cuz. Mr. James Dean on a bike. Yeah, they know what's right. <laughs> this is just east of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Shelby's Auto Center. 
Anyways, I'm with, <laughs> throw a little gas in. See if I can talk to these guys and see what's up. Day four and I'm headed for Amarillo to North Texas outside of Dallas to visit with my lifelong buddy for a few days over the Memorial Day weekend. The scenery has changed to green and will pretty much stay that way for the remainder of the trip. It was great to take a break from the road for a few days and have my buddy show me his area of the Lone Star State. I also took the time to give the bike a good wash. After a relaxing visit in Texas, I headed out for day five on the road. Weather will hit the 90s with no rain in the forecast. I'm shooting for Nashville, Tennessee, but will lay over in Little Rock, Arkansas. I pass through Texarkana, which reminds me of the Smokey and Bandit theme song. It's nice to start having forests and rivers for scenery, and I feel that freedom of the road again. Today I'm just laying down miles, headed east. Rolling into Little Rock, the road conditions were really bad. I think a good investment would be a tire store in Little Rock, because I'm sure tires don't last long here. I heard on the news that night that Arkansas has the second worst roads in the U.S. I'd hate to see the number one state for that statistic. Making it through a few miles on this section of the freeway was gnarly and required extra attention on where the rubber meets the road. Dangerous to say the least, a bent rim would really suck here. After checking into the motel and wanting some barbecue, I decided to swing by the state capitol building and find a place to eat. I did find a good barbecue shack near the capitol building. All in all, not a bad day five. Hey, how are you? It's uh, Tuesday, May 31, about one in the afternoon or so. And uh, I just rolled into I just rolled into Arkansas, Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas. Remember that dude that was in the White House for a while, Bill Clinton? I guess this is his. Uh, this was his uh, governor's building. This is the state capitol for Arkansas. And there's my bike in front of it. We got about 2,400 miles on it now in five days. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's hot and muggy. The, the humidity is what's a killer uh, in this state. I left um, North Dallas this morning. I think I'm going to hold up uh, in uh, Little Rock overnight and make it to Nashville tomorrow. So uh, we'll check in then. Awesome. Bye. Leaving Arkansas at day six, I headed for Nashville, Tennessee but made a point of stopping by Elvis Presley's house in Memphis. Crossing into Memphis from Arkansas, you go over the Mississippi River, which was pretty cool. The mighty Mississippi is iconic in the US, and with my minimal planning, I didn't even know I was going to cross it until I did. I had to stop once I crossed the bridge just to capture this spot on the trip. Just another bonus along the way. Hey, good morning. June 1, about 9 a.m. Wednesday. Uh, just rolled into Memphis, Tennessee, just across the uh, Arkansas border. I didn't know Memphis is right on the border of Arkansas, but it is right on the border. And so what's cool is I crossed the mighty Mississippi, came across the Mississippi River into Memphis from Arkansas. And uh, the video doesn't do it justice, uh, much like the Grand Canyon, but it is indeed huge <laughs> that is one wide river so uh yeah i'm gonna cruise by elvis's house uh here this morning check it out see what's up and then uh keep headed east so have a fantastic wednesday peace back on the road graceland was just about 10 minutes away exit onto elvis presley boulevard and it is right there on the boulevard 
very cool. All right, <laughs> so I made it across the street. Here's the main gate, main gate to Graceland. This is the real deal, man. Everybody's written all over this brick wall. And of course, right up there. Is uh, Graceland. Pretty cool, huh? I'm not going to go in and do a tour. Because I got to lay down some miles today. But, uh. It's absolutely pretty cool to to be here. So then I'm gonna do a little photo op. Nice thing about being on a bike is you always get front seat parking. Front row parking. Continuing on east out of Memphis, headed for Nashville, the scenery was great, traffic was minimal, and the weather awesome. Tennessee is a beautiful state, and I would like to spend more time exploring it on my bike. Perhaps next tour, I will spend more time in both Tennessee and Virginia, as there is so much great scenery. Rolling into Nashville, I was excited to experience the music scene that I've heard so much about. Even during the day, it didn't disappoint. This is a must-see stop through Tennessee. I suggest you don't miss it. All right, so I'm on Broadway in Nashville. This place is off the hook. It's got music popping out of every single window as you walk past these places. You probably hear that. It's uh, you got every band playing every cover, cover of country you've ever thought of. Check out some of these places. You guys are just sitting in the windows like the French quarters and uh <laughs> these guys man every window. This dude's getting ready to put a stand-up base up, that's cool, we'll check it out. You fellas? Hey they seem pretty cool about it too. Uh yeah. This place looks like a fun gig, man. I used to play San Francisco quite a bit. But uh, I think I'd like to play here a whole lot more. The street goes on and on. They're everywhere. I guess I'll stop in and get a beer. It's a little muggy. Thirsty. Check in later. Boswell's Harley in Nashville was awesome. I called the day before to get a bike service and they said no problem. Day seven for a service stop and then hit the road. Hey, good morning. It is Thursday. I think June 2nd, and uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning, getting my bike service, getting the 10,000 service done on it uh, here at the Nashville Harley. And this place has a cafe inside the dealership. It's one of two in the U.S. that has it. Uh, it's pretty freaking cool. You can see up here on the top where we're at. They started in 1949, and then... Uh, they have all these different progressions of the of the uh, dealership as it progressed through the years, and then it's just totally cool. It's nostalgic, right? It has all this cool memorabilia. It's totally fifties decked out diner, but it's inside the dealership. You'd never know. And not only that. But they got the best prices in town. Nobody can beat five bucks for a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich in Nashville, I can guarantee it. So, yeah, I got about two or three hours here. Get, get the bike service tightened up, and then uh, 
and then I'm gonna hit the road. It's supposed to be spotty rain today, but headed towards Washington, D.C. So we'll see what the day brings. Have a great Thursday. Bye. Headed east on I-40 through Tennessee, the morning started great. More beautiful scenery and light traffic. For the rest of the trip, the hot weather was behind me, and I would be dodging rainstorms now and then the rest of the way. My weather app showed a large storm cell ahead for the day. I thought I might make it through the storm pattern, but as I got closer, I stopped to get the rain gear on and cover my bags. I'm glad I did because just outside of Knoxville, I caught the first rain of my trip. The gear worked great and I stayed dry. The trick to riding in the rain is to still avoid potholes when they are covered in water. Fortunately, I only did about an hour in the rain before holding up for the night. I use the Hotel.com app to book a hotel once I know where I'm going to land. In this case, I landed early for the day and will continue on tomorrow. No worries. By the time I hit the road on day 8 in the saddle, the storm had passed overnight with no more bad weather through Virginia towards Washington, D.C. Virginia was beautiful as you might expect with mountain ranges on either side of me and passing the Shenandoah National Park. I was feeling blessed to be out here on the road experiencing this country. I haven't felt this kind of freedom in decades and it was doing my soul good. The winding road and scenery was the best jet on this trip. I put my feet up on the highway pegs, laid back, and cruised. Washington, D.C. was coming up, but I decided to stay this Friday night in Pentagon City, Virginia, just across the bridge from D.C. The next day I would enter D.C. early in the morning on a Saturday, hoping this would give me an easy in and out of Washington, D.C. It worked out perfectly, and I couldn't have had an easier time for this part of the trip. Google Maps showed me the best area to hold up for a quick jump across the Potomac River into downtown DC. Thinking of terrible traffic, I had to make this as easy as possible. My bike doesn't like sitting in traffic. Day nine on the road and I get an early start into Washington DC. The weather is perfect and traffic is light as I pass the Pentagon on my right and head for the bridge across the Potomac. I'm excited to visit the nation's capital and even more so doing it on my bike. I say to myself, this is gonna be fun. What an awesome morning. Even so, passing the Pentagon, I think of the airline strike it suffered on 9-11. short distance is the bridge over the Potomac River. I could see the Lincoln Memorial in front of me. This is awesome. Everything one might want to see is right there in a small area. Being on a bike early on a Saturday, it was my intent to just roll up, park where I want, and claim a motorcycle tourist privilege as needed. Fortunately, with the city still quiet, I didn't have any problems. 
The one thing that did surprise me though was the amount of police everywhere and blockades around some areas such as the White House and Congress. I guess DC is still running scared. All in all, it was a cool stop along the way on this coast to coast to coast tour. No need to visit DC again. Been there, done that, and it was pretty interesting. I stopped for a couple video clips and still shots, then decided to head out of town on my way to Maine, my furthest point east for the trip. However, first stop, the Lincoln Memorial. Hey y'all, good morning. Saturday, June 4, about 7.15 in the morning. I held up in uh, Arlington across the river from Washington, D.C. and uh, headed across this morning. It took six minutes to get in to uh, the D.C. And you come across the bridge and everything's right there. Uh, behind me is the Lincoln Memorial. And, um, and then I'm gonna head over to, uh, I'm gonna head over to uh, the White House see what that's all about and then um, tool around a little bit this morning and <laughs> perfect weather it's 68 degrees out sunny it's gonna be a beautiful weekend all the way up to Maine I'm gonna try to make Maine today and then uh, and then I'm heading back heading west Maine is the farthest point I'm going and I should hit that this weekend so Pretty cool, man. I'm going to check out Washington, D.C., see what it's all about. Check in with you guys later.
<laughs> All right, good morning. I don't know, it's probably 8.30 now in Washington, D.C., Saturday, June 4. Uh, I've been tooling around all morning, and the streets are pretty empty. It's awesome. You can just cruise around. It's the cops everywhere that have, it, have, have everything shut down. You can't get close to anything. And I tried pulling in up close to a couple places like the White House, man, and they're all over you in seconds. Cop, bite cops. Um, but I got some shots, photos. Didn't have time to take video of it. And uh, and so this is the, the state capitol behind me. It's really a peaceful spot in the shade. Kind of rest for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I had my GoPro going and got all kinds of really cool driving through the streets and seeing all the massive old buildings. And uh, Capitol Square Directory. I know it's in reverse on this camera now, but it's the easiest way for me to shoot. <laughs> so, anyways, Washington D.C. Man, been there, done that. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make plans to head east or north out of here. And um, I think my route takes me past uh, New York, Boston, all that. See how far I can get towards Maine today. But yeah, pretty cool, man. Hope you guys have a great Saturday, great weekend. Check in with you later. All right, bye. Heading out of DC and up the East Coast, I really had to start paying attention to my GPS a lot more than usual. I passed through Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, before holding up in Hartford, Connecticut for the day. At first, the ride was pleasant with little traffic and good roads. I hit my first toll road of the trip in Maryland on the 95. I had bought a toll badge called Unipass, which covers most all tolls for the East Coast and Northern states. This worked fine, however, I noticed it is best to take it out of your pocket and hold it up while going through the toll for it to work well. You pay a bit more, they have to process a photo of your license plate. Sometimes the green light didn't come on for me. I hit the New Jersey turnpike and thought, cool, I'm on the East Coast. The only traffic nightmare I had for the whole trip was the George Washington Bridge into Manhattan, New York around noon on Saturday. This took skill and concentration to navigate. Fortunately, I'm used to San Francisco Bay Area traffic, which schooled me for this. Keeping an eye on the GPS is crucial for navigating these roads. I was very pleased once I made it out of the New York area. That was running a gauntlet for sure. 
Entering Connecticut, I was again back into good country scenery and glad to have the cement jungle behind me. I held up in Hartford, Connecticut for the night, looking forward to hitting Maine the next day. Day 10 on the road and looking forward to hitting Maine around noon. This will be my halfway point and I'm looking forward to standing on the coast. While a few video clips go by passing through Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and into Maine, I'd like to speak for just a bit on packing for this three to four week tour. First I'd say I definitely overpacked clothes. I thought I needed an extra change of shoes and some flip flops, but I didn't. I thought I needed two weeks of undergarments, socks, t-shirts, etc., but I didn't because there are laundromats everywhere, including in most hotels. I thought I should bring an extra jacket, but no need. For me, this tour was about being on the road, not the hotel stage, restaurants, sightseeing destinations, but being in the saddle. That being the case, I only needed a couple jeans, a few shirts, maybe a week's worth of undergarments one set of long johns and rain gear. Really, everything for clothing would fit into one side bag. I did bring emergency bike repair stuff like a tire plug kit and a 12 volt air compressor, my battery charger, various wrenches, sockets, screwdrivers, hex wrenches, electrical tape wire, small medical kit, etc. This was just half of one side bag. Camera gear, chargers, etc. round out the side bag. Really that's about it, leaving the rear trunk for stowing the jacket, helmet, heavier gloves, and stuff bought along the way. I didn't need the extra baggage. One other good idea was putting a new battery in the key fob, because who wants the headache of the fob not working? Next tour, I'm definitely going to be traveling light. Rolling into Maine, it was great scenery and perfect weather. I intended to get an early check-in at the hotel, unload the bags, and hit the coast. This was the milestone in the tour that I've been looking forward to the most. Headed this way for the last week or so, I saw on my weather app, rainstorms come and go through Maine, and there's another storm headed this way from the west. But for the next two days, I have clear weather to enjoy the coast. Several times over, I felt fortunate with the weather on this ride so far. I beat the heat waves, tornadoes, and most of the rain. And now the East Coast in Maine is giving me her best. A quick stop to shed the gear, and I'm off to check out Portland, Maine's coast. Speaking with the hotel clerk, I got a map of the area and some good places to get a lobster dinner. It was a pleasant ride through the rural parts of South Portland for a couple miles before getting to the coastline. At one point, on one of these roads, the traffic was stopped as a good Samaritan guided a native turtle across the road to safety. Yeah, that took a few minutes. All in all, living here looks like a pretty good deal and a nice place to be.
All right, howdy. This is so awesome. Sunday, June 5. And, uh, you know, I left, uh, left California May 23rd. And I am now on the coast of Maine. And I've been cruising around all day. Just, it's such a beautiful, quaint, right? Quaint. I'm in Portland, Maine. And uh, everybody's so friendly, so rural and nice. <laughs> Place to retire for sure. Anyways, coming down the coast, I found this lighthouse. It's called uh, Fort Williams Park, and they call it Portland Headlight um, Lighthouse. So this place is off of the cool. Um, we'll walk around a little bit, get closer. But, uh, you know, my 800-pound gorilla got me here, no problem. And uh, we're parked on the coast of Maine. Pretty cool. Got some lobster tonight. I got the, I got the side on where to go to get some really good fresh lobster. Comes in on the boat every day. So, yeah, how cool is this place? I'm going to keep looking, uh, keep going down the coast. I got a bunch of good GoPro video into town and I'm going to take some good photos and post you know it's scenic it's the Atlantic coastline very familiar with the Pacific coastline I grew up on the Pacific coast but I've never been on the east coast so this is pretty 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 cool all right guys I'll check with you later um, after Maine I'm gonna go see Niagara Falls look at this weather Blue skies, cotton candy clouds, unbelievable, unbelievable luck on the weather coming out here. Anyways, have a great Sunday. See ya. Day 11 on the road and headed for Buffalo, New York, where Niagara Falls is located. It was a full day of riding through New Hampshire, Vermont, and upstate New York. This was the beginning of touring the upper northern states, and I was definitely looking forward to it. Weather app showed a large rain cell coming into Buffalo by the late afternoon, but I was hopeful to land there before the brunt of it hit. The highways I took through New Hampshire and Vermont were more rural on the way, to I-90 West through upstate New York. It was nice to have a bit more of the country feel along the way, and the traffic was light. This whole trip I always made good time laying down four to five hundred miles in a day no problem. I wasn't really hitting that commute traffic around metro cities. I wound up taking this little two-lane highway west through Vermont. At first it was very cool with winding roads, rivers, forests, and wildflowers. However, my GPS didn't know that about 10 miles of it was ripped up ahead of me and I was going to have to have no choice but to take the dirt and mud road for a bit. Man, I just washed my bike the day before up in Maine. Fortunately, I did a bit of dirt bike riding when I was younger so no worries on handling this jive. Just be prepared for anything. I found road work pops up everywhere, but Vermont seems to tear up 10 miles of highway at a go. To each state their own, I guess.
Getting out of that one-hour delay in road work, I throttled back to make up some time and beat the storm cells ahead. I-90 West was a good place to be, and I laid it down. Fortunately, I only hit about an hour of the rain before rolling into the Moonlight Motel in the city of Niagara Falls, just a few miles from the falls. Rain is expected through the overnight and into the next day, so I had the clerk add another day to my stay there. Looked like potato chips and TV for a day. I usually like motels because I can put the bike in front of the room. I will say though, I never had any overnight issues with my bike, and in the mornings, it was always the way I had left it. Howdy, howdy. Hey, uh, June 7, it's about 6 p.m. Tuesday, June 7, and it took me, I got to Niagara Falls yesterday from uh, Maine, Portland, Maine, but uh, it, the rain was coming down hard, and so today it rained all day. A big cell went through, and it just passed. So I jumped on the bike, I stayed in about five, 10 minutes away, and uh, shot down to the park, pretty much empty. But uh, let's experience, I'm walking up to the falls right now, and uh, this will be a first impression for all of them. Well, I'm not unless you've been here before. It'll be a first impression for me. <laughs> and maybe for you too, let's check it out. It's uh, coming right up around this corner, I think. Sometimes these park maps, uh, oh yeah, no, there's some viewing goggles right up here. Binoculars. You can kind of hear it, I think. So these are the American and the Bridal Falls. Oh, I was really hoping I'd be below them. I thought they'd be standing up above us, but here they are. See those people standing down there getting wet fortunately I'm in my rain gear I'm gonna walk down there and get as close to that water as I can they say the Canadian side is the uh, best side uh, that's like where all the iconic pictures are taken uh, they're coming from the Canadian side of the river and um, so yeah I see on the other side you can get down below the falls. That'd be cool. See right where it's crashing. Anyways, I'm gonna head down here and I'll check in then. This is pretty cool, man. This is where it drops off. There's all kinds of little drop-off spots. Check this out. There's a little tiny one. You could jump right in if you wanted to. <laughs> check it out. Check it out, there's one of those boats that go out there. <laughs> this is pretty cool. When I get off video, I'm gonna definitely uh, take my time and, and, and experience this a little, a little closer. But uh, I want to share. Let's move over here to the big one. Everybody's getting their photo ops in. Well, I hope you saw all that. That's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna log off and uh, Niagara Falls, check. Have a good one. Day 12 on the road and I'm headed for Waterloo, Iowa. This will take me through Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois into Iowa. 
This was an 820 mile run, so I decided to only make Toledo, Ohio about 300 miles away and do the next 500 miles the next day. Weather forecast was showing good for the next several days, so no need to avoid storm cells. The skies were cloudy and I enjoyed that as part of the scenery. I thought of stopping by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum in Cleveland, but decided against it. In hindsight, that would have been a pretty cool stop. Once you're past Cleveland, it's back into some wide open farmlands through Indiana. This was just a peaceful day of cruising and experiencing riding through these states. Traffic was light, and I pretty much left it on cruise control at about 75 miles an hour. Staying on I-90 West past Chicago, Illinois, as you get back into more industrious traffic for several miles. I jumped onto I-80 West towards Iowa, and it wasn't long before I'm back into the farmland and light traffic. I don't know why, probably boredom, but I decided to capture the world's largest truck stop on I-80 West in Iowa. I was good on gas, so I didn't make a stop. This day was a 500 mile run, but soon enough I was at my next important destination, which was the Sullivan Brothers Museum in Waterloo, Iowa. I had called them a few days earlier, letting them know I was the great, great, great grandson of the city founder, Mary Melrose Hanna. When I arrived, the whole staff came out to greet me, and after exchanging family stories, they showed me around the museum with the VIP treatment. The box was given to the museum by my father in 1959. This was the best place for the family heirloom. Next destination point was Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. This was about 650 miles and again I decided to break it into two days. The weather was great so no rush. For day 14 on the road I decided to hold up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota but by way of Alberta Lea, Minnesota. Being born in Minnesota, I wanted an Alberta Lee Harley t-shirt from the dealer there. Cool little place with friendly folks. This day brought some threatening clouds, but I was fortunate to see them dropping rain out past me. My radar app was great in letting me see the storm patterns ahead. I made Sioux Falls and held up for the night, looking forward to what South Dakota was going to offer. Leaving Sioux Falls, day 15 of touring the country, the weather was awesome. I think it stayed in the 80s all day. I wound up passing 1880 town on I-90 West. I guess this place has been on TV documentaries for its unique offerings, but I decided to keep on the road. At a city called Wall in South Dakota, a gas station clerk convinced me to visit the Badlands National Park. I'm glad I did because it was a cool loop through the park to Rapid City where I was holding up for Mount Rushmore. Hey guys, it's uh, June 11, Saturday, and uh, I'm in South Dakota now, and I am uh, heading for Mount Rushmore, but I uh, took off on this national park called the Badlands. 
uh, it's pretty cool. Um, of course, my uh, National Parks vet uh, pass got me in that I got to Grand Canyon on this trip. So it's pretty much like this. Uh, you drive through these canyons of uh, some, I don't know what kind of rock it is, some kind of shale or I don't know what the hell it is. Um, probably old seabed or something. But yeah, it's pretty much like this. It's a loop, a loop you go through off of the uh, West 90. <laughs> and, uh, and so yeah, uh, going to make uh, Mount Rushmore uh, either this afternoon or I will, uh, I'll catch it uh, first thing in the morning. So South Dakota, it's not bad. Kind of pretty once you get to the west side. Check in with you guys later. Bye. After an overnight stay in Rapid City on day 16, I headed out to Mount Rushmore about 20 miles away and through the little town of Keystone. The ride is beautiful with winding mountain roads and pine forests. unexpected surprise was to see the monument before going into the park. People were pulling over and I wound up pulling a U-turn and doing the same for a photo op. This was very cool. The park was only $10 for parking and to get in as close to the monument as possible, so I did. Hey, good morning. Sunday, June 12. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and I made it to Mount Rushmore National Park. I broke down all my gear. It's nice and warm out today, mid 70s. And uh, yeah, let's go into the park. You see, it's right here. It's pretty cool, but I gotta tell you, it looks a little smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> That'd be bigger, maybe it is. And I just don't get it, but. Um, Anyways, that's it, right up there. So yeah, kind of busy, not too busy. It's a nice Sunday, beautiful drive in. It's uh, all uh, pine trees and windy mountains. It's only about a, about a uh, 15 mile ride from Rapid City through a small town called Keystone, which is pretty cool. It's all westerned out. And uh, so the drive's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I'm gonna check this out a little bit and I hope you guys have a great Sunday. All right, bye. Day 17 and I was headed for Livingston, Montana, cutting through the northwest corner of Wyoming. This was about a 430 mile day with a large storm cell ahead. Looking at it, I thought I could make my way through it okay, and I did. The day started with grasslands throughout Wyoming and then turned to some cool Montana scenery. 
with long rivers and canyons. The next day I was going to go through the west gate to Yellowstone and do a loop, but the overnight storm flooded out the area, causing a state of emergency. Houses and roads were washed away. They hadn't seen anything like this in over a hundred years. Day 18, I headed for Spokane, Washington to visit my son for a couple days. My weather app showed storm cells all over the place along the way, but I wouldn't get into the thick of it for a few hours. It was 40 degrees when I hit the road, but layering up well, I very much enjoyed the ride through Montana. This was probably the best scenery yet on the tour. Hey, good morning. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Tuesday, June 14th, and I'm up in Montana now. Uh, just, uh, I think I'm just east of Butte. I'm past, uh, past Bowman and I've been taking 90 west. Made it through Wyoming yesterday. Rolled into, uh, Livington, Montana yesterday evening. And, uh, overnight, Mon uh, Yellowstone, the west gate. I was going to go into Yellowstone through the west gate there and do a loop, uh, but it flooded out. And they're in a state of emergency now. Uh, the roads, homes, things have been washed away. So it's unfortunate for all the folks there, of course. Uh, I would have liked to have seen, seen Yellowstone on this trip. It was, it was right there. Uh, but yeah, it is, uh, it is frigid this morning. I woke up, it was 40, 40 degrees. I've been on the road for several hours now. And uh, you can see here on my bike... It's still 43 degrees out <laughs> and windy. They got they, they've given some high high wind alerts, uh, saying that there could be gusts up to 70 miles an hour. So, anyways, I pulled over, take a little break, uh, try to get some blood flowing. Uh, fortunately, I have got all the proper gear on. I am bundled up like a Eskimo, layered up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I got about 300 miles to go still, and uh, I should be in Spokane, Washington this evening. Anyways, cool little update. Uh, hope you guys are doing well and have a great week. All right. Bye. Continuing on I-90 West, the winds were brutal and it definitely slowed me down a bit, but didn't stop me. It was the travel trailers you had to watch out for. Sure enough, the rain hit, but only for about an hour, then I was through the worst. Getting into Idaho, wind and rain let up, but it stayed in the 40s all day. Once I hit Washington State Line, Spokane was right there, and I was definitely looking forward to a very hot shower and a good night's sleep. After a couple days in Spokane, I headed south through Central Oregon. I had planned to go to Portland, Oregon and down the Highway 101 into California, but there were just too many storms coming in and I had had enough of that. The route down Central Washington and Oregon takes you along the Columbia River for several miles and that was cool. North Central Oregon is high plain desert without much to see. Although I was avoiding storms on the coast, there were also plenty of cells crossing my route. Traffic was good on this weekday, but you never know what's coming up. Once I got down further into Oregon, trees and hills began to appear. I decided to stay overnight in Bend, Oregon before making my last run into California and home. Mm -hmm. 
Leaving Bend, Oregon on day 19 in the saddle, there were still a few rain cells ahead, but nothing I couldn't handle by this point in my tour. The scenery was getting beautiful again, and I looked forward to passing Mount Shasta in California. There were spots along the way as reminders of all the wildfires the West Coast has been suffering the past several years. An opportunity for new growth, I guess. At Klamath Lake, I caught rain for just a bit. This would be the last of the rain on this trip. California was the only state border where I had to pass through an inspection area. Today they were just waving people through. It wasn't long before I was in California's Shasta Trinity National Forest, and the ride was awesome. Traffic was extremely light, and I made good use of the highway pegs. Hey guys, Friday, June 17th. Left Oregon this morning, and uh, stopped, uh, came through this, I think it's just Mountain Mount Pass, and stopped here at uh, Shasta Peak, just the point, and unfortunately, peak is uh, covered by a cloud it's back there behind me and uh, it's pretty cool I've been here before when you see the peak it's pretty pretty uh, stunning but not today not today we've got the clouds We're dodging the rainstorms low rain showers through Oregon and uh, I think I'll have a little bit of it uh, through Shasta and then it'll clear up going through the valley on the way home. Should be home this evening. And uh, be just about over 8,000 miles. It's about what I expected. <laughs> and my uh, trip has been has been great. Been able to stop and see everything I wanted to see along the way, except for Yellowstone. Got flooded out. That was too bad. But um, yeah, bike held up great. It's like riding a Cadillac. Just so smooth the whole way, just cruising. So, uh, when I get home, I'm gonna take all my GoPro video, edit it down to a, a YouTube video. I'll let you guys know what that is. Uh, probably call it Freedom Ride 2022. Um, hopefully, we can keep having these Freedom Rides in the future here. Maybe Alaska next time, that'd be cool. So, anyways, uh, have a great time. I might stop at Lake Shasta, uh, catch some video of that, and uh, check in with you guys at that point. Uh, otherwise, have a great Friday and a wonderful weekend. Thanks for following. All right, bye. Crossing Shasta Lake, you're reminded of the drought California is facing. All the lakes and reservoirs are way below capacity. It looks like the boat people will have to hike up dirt hills to get to the parking areas. Finally, I'm back into my familiar California Central Valley and headed into Sacramento near the homestead. A part of me is pleased to be back home. The other part of me wants to take a left on I-80 and check out some of the Midwest states. I decided to head for home for now. The next tour will be awesome.